Well, this week's news picks, we have a high sensitivity troponin T assay compared to troponin I, and also two studies of atrial fibrillation, one long-term on cognitive effects and the other the acute complications of cardioversion. So to begin with, we have a nice study comparing three different high sensitivity troponin assays, one troponin T and two different manufacturers troponin I, and then the standard troponin T. And not surprisingly, the high sensitivity assays were um, detected more patients with evidence of necrosis and were better performers for predicting mortality. And this was a study in uh, 1,100 patients presenting to the emergency department with unselected cardiac chest pain. Uh, and they found that the high sens sensitivity troponin T ended up having a better receiver operator curve with an area under the curve of 0.78 as compared with 0 0.70, 0 0.71 for the high sens sensitivity troponin I. Interestingly, change in the troponin didn't seem to add anything uh, over and above whatever the initial value was. And so a very nice study showing that high sensitivity troponin T uh, ideally or I can play a key role in identifying mortality risk in the emergency department. Next up, we have a study that looked at uh, silent cerebral ischemia uh, measured by many different uh, detailed assessments done in 180 patients with atrial fibrillation, half of it persistent, half of it paroxysmal, and an additional 90 controls. They used uh, cerebral magnetic resonance and um, a series of uh, neurologic tests and found that, not surprisingly, patients in atrial fibrillation had lower scores and a higher prevalence of silent cerebral ischemia, where about 90% of patients with either type of atrial fibrillation had at least one episode of silent cerebral ischemia. Um, here, I think there weren't major differences between the um, overall incidence, but the number of cerebral um, incidence was higher amongst those with uh, paroxysmal or persistent um, episodes of AFib. And so uh, the sobering side of atrial fibrillation, that there are neurologic events that are silent, um, and so we have to be vigilant in managing the patients. And then the top pick this week is an interesting series of patients looking at the complications of uh, cardioversion in patients who present with new atrial fibrillation to the emergency department. In uh, a group of uh, looking at 7,600 cardioversions overall, they focused in on 5,100 successful cardioversions done in 2,400 uh, patients in those who had presented early and thus didn't have periprocedural anticoagulation. So trying to do the cardioversion before, in theory, one would need anticoagulation. But they found that the incidence ranged from 0.2 to as high as 10% of developing a stroke in the next 30 days, with heart failure and diabetes being two risk factors and also age um, and female gender contributed, so that the lowest risk were in young patients uh, without uh, heart failure, but the diabetics with heart failure were those who had a 10% risk of complication. And so they call attention to these high-risk groups, suggesting they may be appropriate for anticoagulation, even in that acute cardioversion setting. So for Cardiosource, uh, I'm Chris Cannon.